Hey, what's going on, fellas? Today we got three things to test out. One of them is this stainless steel corrosion resistant nozzle. And we have two different combustion chamber sizes to try because we're going to be ordering a batch of 100 silicon carbide versions of this combustor. But this nozzle performs phenomenal and it will never rust. Okay, so far so good. This is a little bit bigger than I think I want it to be. However, let's check the nozzle out. Look at that Vena Contracta. That is so awesome. Performing very well. Awesome nozzle. This thing can get nearly red hot without having any problems. That's a 45% silver brazing rod. That's not a solder there. So this is a very robust nozzle. The combustor, I kind of like it. However, it's so big that the cost of the silicon carbide may prohibit that particular design. We do have a smaller one to test out, but uh, so far this thing looks really nice. I think I like it. Essentially what's happening there is a supersonic jet stream is ripping a fuel column into a mist, like one layer at a time. The velocity of that air is said to be at Mach 1, based on the calculations that I've looked into. It pretty much stays that speed. Anytime you have, um, you're venting into atmospheric pressure, it's like some type of limit with venting into atmospheric pressure. Okay, right here we're burning super lean, and I don't like what I see at all. It's just not behaving the way I would want it to see. We're at 113 kilowatts, which is substantial. That combustor should be glowing pretty good. We might have a little bit too much air. It could behoove me to turn it down and try that, but I was too stupid to think about it at the time. So, for the most part, I mean, it's not bad, but uh, my camera work certainly is. We do have something weird going on with the right or the left side on your side. For some reason the fuel flow is different. There is no real observable difference. So when you're looking down at the jet from the top, it kind of veers off to the left a little bit. And I think it's because the orifice is off to the left a little bit. And the air currents flying around the tubing from the Ventura effect is causing an air blast or something to push the fuel in that direction. Very minor inconsistencies in your nozzle will alter the way the plane looks and the way
loving both of these things, the nozzle and the combustor. I think this is a pair here. We're going to have to do something about this. This is definitely the configuration we're going with. I love the size of the combustor. The smaller size should make it half the price. Hopefully I can get them for 15 bucks a piece. Because buying a thousand, that's like 30 grand or something crazy like that. So at $30 a piece, not cool. So I'm not trying to come off 30K. And this thing seems to be running better. So it's a win-win. I'm only going to be 15 grand in the hole. Okay, so here's the big combustor. We're at 132 kilowatts with the same air input. And I, I don't know, I don't like it. I can tell you right now that it's not as hot. I think we're up to 150 kilowatts right here, actually. I ended up adding air. I just don't like it. I don't think it's gonna be worth the extra money. Look at this thing. Tell me that ain't good. Even at higher operating rates, it, it does very well. I kind of overdo it here and there, but can you blame me for not doing enough? I think this is it. This is I'm gonna draft up the diagram and send it off. Fellas, we're pushing 280 kilowatts here, and look at the stability of that flame. Now I can't vouch for the accuracy of this flow gauge with diesel fuel. It's probably made for water, and I don't know what the mass difference or the buoyancy difference of those two substances has to do with it, but uh, I think I was trying to say specific gravity there. It just wasn't coming out, man. But man, look at that. Okay, this is the other combustor now, and I'm just, I'm not impressed anymore. I mean, that's kind of cool. I, another thing I want to point out, it seems the smaller one was quieter. So let's not forget about that not as loud I should do a decibel test tomorrow I'll do that I mean that ain't so bad don't get me wrong it's just I don't know it's hard to say that's pretty fancy too but it's gonna cost so much more to have that made you know I gotta say this is an exceedingly stable combustion chamber also Look at the temperatures at the back end of the combustor there, and also take note of the standoff I have on the fuel nozzle. That's creating a very significant Ventura effect there. It's kind of blowing back the pulse jetting, as you can see. But because we have such a hot fireball going on at the back of the burner here, that's a good sign this thing's extremely stable. It's not going to blow out very easily with that internal combustion going in that zone like that. We're fire hot the second that air enters the combustor. However, if you look at this little beauty, you can see it's not struggling in that area at all. I think this is definitely the winner. I like the way this thing runs. Okay, we're looking at 276 kilowatts right here. So this is a significant power, but a lot of air, 6.5 horsepower of air going into this little beast. I love this combustion chamber. This is definitely gonna be the one we make out of silicon carbide. is to bore this hole out to equal the size in this combustion chamber this did perform very well for lower settings with a um, very lean setting very high temperature not so good for the very high outputs for large jobs but definitely very good for small hot jobs
we got a tough decision to make. I'm thinking going with the small combustor. I gotta buy a thousand of these damn things. They're gonna be made out of silicon carbide. I believe that's the formula. There may be some other additives in there. There better not be some rip-off Chinese composition. I don't know what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get some samples and figure out a way to determine the sample composition's the same as the batch. I gotta do all this crazy stuff, so it's about to cost me a lot of money. I think a hundred of them is gonna cost me like three thousand dollars or something like that. So if I can't get these things cheap, I'm not gonna do it. But um, even if they cost about 30 bucks a piece, I still might do it because I want something that can run white hot for years. It's got to last years. There's some applications, these burners are burning up in three months with 24 hour operation. So that can get a little expensive. So we're going silicon carbide just like everybody else in big industry, but um, I can't sell them for $5,000, so that's the problem. Um, most of the time when you go to buy them, they're just so expensive from an individual dealer. You gotta buy in bulk, and uh, I'm not trying to get rich. I'm just trying not to starve to death. I'm willing to share ideas to people who can make their own stuff, and it's kind of cool being able to provide a service to people who either don't have time to build their own or just don't have the tools to do it or the know-how. It took me a year to figure this out. So there you have it. I'm shutting up.